Reverend Edward A. Malloy wrote, and I quote, a college degree is not a sign that one is a finished product, but an indication a person is prepared for life, unquote. I am honored to stand before you today on this singular occasion and attempt to shed light on what I believe the Reverend meant by these profoundly sobering words. I hope that as we pause and remember the years that we have spent here at this institution, ponder upon what we have attained and determine where the next leg of our journey will take us, we will realize and appreciate this tremendous feat. Looking back at the time we endured at the college, we may be amazed at how quickly the years passed by. I'm sure everyone can remember his or her first day. The anxiety and excitement of being in new clothes with new people in a new environment. The act of settling in and searching for classrooms and believe it or not, lecturers too. We were overwhelmed when told by each lecturer of the great extent of work to be covered during the semester and then being handed a home assignment on the first day. Nevertheless, the first year pressed on, and each person, in his own inimitable way, settled into the bustling college life. The second year was an easier burden, but a burden nonetheless, because the workload our students can attest was not any lighter, and the pressure to prepare for exams, including the Cambridge externals, much greater. But in all, we persevered, and for most of us, I believe, gave it our best. <laughs> Those memorable years at the college were always filled with activity. Ball games, freestyle competitions, talks and presentations, assemblies, elections, parties in the kiosks, lunches at the Banana Pavilion, visits to the college farm, health fairs, job fairs, college fairs, and the revealing of secret affairs. <laughs> Business sales, marathons, and student rights protests, all of which added to the rich culture of the college. When it came to formal study and preparations for examinations, study rooms and library areas were always packed. For although everyone did not make every use of them, most students seem to understand the significance of success in examinations. So whether in work or play, college life was never dull. And these memories that we all helped create will leave everlasting prints in our hearts and will serve to remind us of this short but meaningful passage. Today marks a great achievement in our lives. Some graduates are happy that it's over. Some are sad that it is and many are just looking forward to what comes next, giving very little reflection upon the journey that has just ended. Many parents are overjoyed because this means that we are no longer a strain on their finances. <laughs> but regardless of what this day may mean to everyone, it is a milestone. And not only that the events for today, the addresses, the songs, or the awards will all be remembered but that today signifies a victory. Though we were not involved in physical warfare, we fought for good grades, fought to make and keep friendships and relationships, competed fiercely on the sports field, and even more fiercely during our class debates. Now we have emerged as winners. And though it may not be as we had hopes in every detail, we are winners nonetheless, for we have successfully completed this phase in our quest for a better future. In our pursuit of excellence, what do you believe we attained? I know that apart from a solid education, training and development in business skills, I learned to value my time at college and to cherish even the difficult moments that only seemed to be treasured when they were over. While being a student at Sir Arthur, among other things, I learned to be independent, responsible and patient indispensable qualities needed to survive on the cafeteria lines at lunchtime and to relate to college life generally. The camaraderie of fellow classmates and the support of de lecturers, dealing with difficult classmates and even studying hard for a test that was later postponed were all building blocks in the shaping of my character. Fellow graduates expressed that they learned to be focused, 
realizing that college was no laughing matter and was very different from the sheltered life of secondary school. It was a wepu call reality that surprised others, leading some to focus on the greater freedom rather than the greater responsibility that came with college life. So while some worked hard, others played harder, and still some just went with the flow. This proves that our education did not just come through textbooks, though being a key aspect, but it came also through every little thing that we might have failed to pay much attention to, such as meeting deadlines, making friends, working as a group, or managing our time. And even as we reflect, let us not be dispirited. There is still time to put into practice what we have learned, not just in the era of academics, but in promoting love, in character building, and the things pertaining to life. As pioneers of the 21st century, in the era of advanced technology and globalization, despite the accompanying challenges, and they are many, we dare to follow in the footsteps of many great men and women who have gone before us. For example, Martin Luther King Jr., Mahatma Gandhi, and Sir Arthur Lewis, who all unselfishly dedicated their lives to the betterment of their countries. They defied the conventions of the world that promoted racial, social, religious, and economic segregation. Martin Luther King Jr. fought for a world of peace where all men are equal and led the civil rights movement all over the United States. Mahatma Gandhi encouraged patriotism and national pride and helped to revitalize local economies in India. Sir Arthur Lewis contributed greatly to economic development and was devoted to finding solutions to several of the world's economic problems, even those created from historical times. They believed in revolutionizing the conventions of society and were not dissuaded by the restraints of wealth, education, and opposition. They were men of vision and purpose, men who aspired to greatness, an ideal that began with their way of thinking. Therefore, in like manner, let us tap onto our creative potential in honing our attitudes, character, and mindsets, much like our predecessors did. And let's not wait for later. Let's do it today, while we are young or while the opportunities and challenges present themselves afresh. When we observe our very own nation, St. Lucia, we ought not to be disheartened by the rise in crime, a less buoyant economy, the destructive effect of poverty and unemployment, or even the failed attempts to create resolution by our present leaders. Though significant, these issues, we must instead focus on how we can positively bring about change, and in what way the little that we do can impact on our nation, and by extension, on our world. After all, we are the leaders of the future, and the investment that has been made in us at this college has prepared us in many ways to address these issues. Our education is our tool, so let's not take it lightly. Let us deploy our knowledge, skills, and resources, not only for self-advancement, but to effect change in our society, and to foster growth and development in every area, by cultivating new and improved methods for business, for health, and for education. And let's not think this to be an impossible goal. William Blake, the British poet, wrote, and I quote, whatever is now proved was once imagined. Unquote. So join me in imagining ourselves as catalysts, catalysts in our government, in our firms and hospitals, in our schools, in oiling our technologies and on our farms, catalysts in our communities, churches and families, in the media and in our justice system. Let us plan to take charge of tomorrow by taking charge today, living our lives as shining examples and paving our way in the only manner we know, with excellence. A college degree is not a sign that one is a finished product, but an indication a person is prepared for life. As a president of Notre Dame University, a priest and a scholar, 
Edward Malloy has been able to impart great insight on higher learning. The purpose of a college education, as he expresses it, is making provision for an even more eventful journey, life. In light of this, we ought to be able to say that our time spent here has not been in vain, and we will not only walk out with a degree, a certificate, or an associate degree in hand, but with greater wisdom and discipline, and with an eagerness to see ourselves progress. These words of Reverend Malloy indicate that life for us has truly just begun. And given a young developing nation as St. Lucia is, we have a lot to be hopeful for. It is imperative that we press on, striving for excellence in all that we do. And let's not be discouraged because of the things we were not able to achieve or disheartened because of the mistakes we made on the way. Let us look upon our failures as media for success, instruments of experience, and tools for carving a more excellent outcome. We ought also, in whatever we do, to be men and women of integrity and not compromise the values and morals that have been instilled in us even while at this institution. Let us be faithful to God and remain committed to his purpose in our lives. For the psalmist David says, and I quote, For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. Unquote. Finally, my fellow graduates, I now take this opportunity to thank those who have been instrumental in helping us reach thus far. First of all, our Heavenly Father, who has never ceased to strengthen, guide, and protect us. I would like to also thank our principal, deans, and other college administrators and staff who worked hard to make this day a success. It would be remiss of me if I did not single out our lecturers who dedicated themselves to ensuring that we were well endowed with the requisite knowledge and skills. And to shower praises on you, our parents and guardians, whether financially or emotionally, the support that you've so unflinchingly rendered is greatly appreciated. And I believe that many of us are happy to be here today just to make you proud. My final words to you, the graduating class of 2006, are once again those of the dear reverend, and I quote, a college degree is not a sign that one is a finished product, but an indication a person is prepared for life, unquote. <laughs> Let us all go out there with our newly acquired college education in the quest to better our world and ourselves, knowing full well that the end is not yet come, but that there is much more of life to live. I thank you.